Open digital asset news to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. First up, Chainlink is on the rise. Also, over $10 billion in value has flowed through the Ethereum network, and there's some good news for taxes. And we'll get to all that in just a bit. But first off, let's take a look what's happening with the market. So today it is July 7th. It's about 2.40 Texas time. It looks like Bitcoin holds strong at 92.28. Not much really going on. Down by a little bit. Not up by much over the seven-day period. So pretty happy with that. Ethereum uh, slowly gaining ground. 237. I'd like to see that 244. Tether's Tether. XRP. 18 cents. Watch out. Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV over the last seven days has made a miraculous uh, jump, 20% for some reason. I have no idea why. So anybody uh, has any clue as to why Bitcoin SV is up 20% in seven days, please let me know in the comment section because I have no idea. Also, Cardano up 15% in 24 hours and over around 30% over the last seven days. As a reminder, the mainnet launch is coming up uh, July 7th. Well, today, that is today. And this is the last part and they're going to be doing staking and there is a potential, albeit I'm pretty sure it's going to happen, a Coinbase listing coming up for Cardano. So uh, if you haven't picked up any of that, maybe you should look into the Cardano blockchain. Litecoin, 0.6%, somehow still in the top 10. Uh, Crypto.com, EOS, Binance, and then Chainlink, which we're going to talk about in a bit, up 15% over the last seven days and 6% in one. So uh, looking pretty good. Nothing else really going on. Let's jump into today's story. So first up, Chainlink, one of my holds is going up high. So I like to see this. Now, before we uh, go on with these stories, I think I should be transparent, let you know exactly what my holdings are. So I hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, Cardano, EOS, Stellar, Tezos. So if I get excited or talk about those products a lot, it's because I am biased. And that is just the truth. I try not to be, but it is a little difficult when you have these holdings. So yes, I talk about these a lot. And that's what's going on. So getting the article. On Monday, July 6th, the centralized Oracle Network Chainlink's Link token started a rally that saw it raise from $4.87, its previous all-time high, to $5.40, a new all-time high, in just an hour. That's a pretty huge jump. And the rally did not stop there. On Tuesday, July 7th, Chainlink had managed to set another all-time high when the price got to $5.64. So if you're looking at gains, that's pretty impressive in you know a 48-hour period. I mean, try doing that in the traditional market. Not going to happen. And this was a pretty good quote. Everyone who has ever bought Chainlink at any time, essentially, uh, and simply held is in profit. And that's very true. It's notable that Link went above the 540 level for the first time on July 6th, one day after on-chain market intelligence startup Glassnode said that on July 4th, it had seen a daily net transfer volume of more than $16 million worth of Link to Binance Wallet, which caused some commentators to fear that some whales could be ready to dump some of their Link holdings, which could give a negative impact on the Link prices. And I got to tell you, I'm so tired I've listened to these different stories. I got to tell you, I I sift through so many stories uh, and news uh, when I wake up in the morning just to kind of get the feeling of what's going on. And I'd say about half of them uh, are, well, uh, here's what it is. 25% are analysts who say that uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is going to go up. And 25% is analysts and cryptocurrency experts who think it's going to go down. And those, I just just glance right over because I'm like, this is just so, it's just so ridiculous. I don't care. And then there's also these stories about these whales and how whales are moving things around and that it's causing this uh, huge destructive process and blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing. Uh, whales are always going to be around. They're going to manip manipulate for their own purposes. But as time goes on, you have to understand uh, whales will sell. That's what whales do. They sell and they buy back and, you know, in some little parts. But as time goes on, people like me and you uh, if you are one of our, our just like me who just like to hold things and just like to just keep on with my positions and just hold on for the long haul. If you're one of those people, at some point, all those or not all, but some of these whales are going to be selling and it's going to get into hands like people like us who are not going to sell, who are not big traders, who got other stuff to do, and they're just going to hold on to it. And then you're going to have a uh, supply issue or and a demand issue, and all of a sudden the price is going to go up. And that's what's going to happen. So it really comes out of this. Do you believe in the project that you are holding in the short term? And I'm talking like, like a month, well, two weeks, a month, maybe up to 12 months. 
or even for the long term like over a year, up to 20 years, because that's where I'm at. I don't care what the what the whales are doing, how they're screwing around with different things and, and, and making things. I'm like, go ahead. I mean, sell it and move it to your, your different wallets. I do not care because I can see where the whole space is going. And I know that these people aren't going to last. And that's just how it's going to be. And then I've, I got other traders who are just awful traders. I can trade to the hilt and I can do those leverage trading at 100x. Well, you're going to get wrecked. And I'm just going to sit back and I'm a dollar cost average, and it's gonna, you know, be very boring, like uh, <laughs> I've been for the longest time, and that's it. So it really just comes down to where do you want to be? Are you in it for the short term and you're just here to like play a little bit of money, or are you here for the long term because you actually believe in the space about how cryptocurrency digital assets are gonna change and disrupt the whole environment that we're in? Moving on, going down, scrolling down, scrolling down for the year to date period. Link's return on investment or ROI against the US dollar is plus 220%. Let me read that again. For the year to date period, chain link's return on investment or ROI is 220%. So when I saw that, I'm like, you know, there's been this talk about how there's this huge rally with the S&P 500 and, and the Dow and, and all these different uh, uh, metrics that have really shown the traditional market is just really super strong. And there's a lot of people making a lot of money in the traditional market. And I thought to myself, well, how does that compare? How does that compare to our market and what's going down? Well, here's the S&P 500 index, and uh, it's doing pretty good. I mean, look, it's at uh, it's down a little bit today, but it's over 3,000. That's pretty amazing considering, um, you know, all the things that are going on in the world today. Thank God for the Fed. Uh, but if we scroll down, we take a look at the five-day. Well, it's up 1%. The one month, it's down almost 2%. In three months, it's up a whopping 18%. So congratulations to everybody who's in the traditional markets, and they got 18%. That's a huge year, and I'm not going to take that away from every, anybody. But year to date, you're still down negative 2%, almost two and a half. And over the year, you know, if you look at 365 days, you're up a whopping uh, 5%. So congratulations. But really, if you take a look at it, I mean, how does that compare to what we just saw with Chainlink? If you just would have put some things in a Chainlink and you're like, well, I don't know about cryptocurrency and maybe if you would have put like 5% of your position, even way ahead. So that's great in that, in that sense. What about Bitcoin? Because that's the big one, right? That's the king crypto. This is actually from on 30th of June. And it takes a look at the S&P 500, and it states, in Q1, January, February, March, uh, the S&P 500 went from 3,230, uh, which right now, again, we are looking at 3,166. So on day one, January 1, it went from 3,230 to 2,584. That was the high and the low, i.e. a loss of 20%. Since S&P 500 are currently trading around 3,041, this means that in Q2 2020, it has gone up 17%. As for the S&P 500 year-to-date return, it is negative 5%. This was just on 30th of June. Bitcoin's price uh, reached 7,100 by the close of 31 December, and Bitcoin was trading at 64.23 by the end of Q1 2020, which is a loss of 11%. However, in the second quarter, it went up to all the way to 9,100, which is where we're at right now, roughly 9,200. So Bitcoin's year-to-date ROI is plus 27%. So in other words, if things don't change too much in Q2, uh, which already went happened, Bitcoin is on track to beat the S&P by over 24%. So again, I know how uh, everybody is like, we're making so much money in the traditional market. And I'm like, yes, you are. It, five percent whatever you congratulations i guess uh, whatever so i mean great for you guys but i'm just telling you right now i just don't understand if you're if you're looking out from the from the outside looking in i'm just thinking to myself why wouldn't you just put just a couple of percentage of your portfolio in the cryptocurrency whether it be super you know i mean stable ish like bitcoin or something like Ethereum, which is going to be a ten thousand dollar coin, or even like XRP, or even like VeChain, uh, like we've been talking about. I think that's going to do extremely well. Or Cardano, which is going to go up. I mean, I think Cardano is going to go up massively. I can see it. I can see at least a five X by the end of the year, at least. So, uh, I just don't get it. Anyhow, let's finish up this story. So here are 
the last part that says it's easy to understand investors' optimism when the chain link keeps announcing two to three new partnerships almost every week. Here are the three last projects. This was from uh, Gelato. Looks like it is a DAP. Uh, so they partnered up, then built with build with Cargo. It's a non-fungible token platform for developers, artists, and collectors. And then also the last one was uh, low volatility low volatility money protocol meter IO. And that's just the last three uh, over just you know recently this week. So here's a question for you because I can't really remember uh, exactly all of them but what has been the biggest chain link partnership to date put that in the comments below let's move on to our next story so next up 10 billion flowed through ethereum in q2 this is all about dApps so decentralized apps built in the ethereum blockchain reached a transaction volume of 10 billion in q2 according to dapp.com in a new report ethereum led the way in terms of transaction volume dwarfing all other blockchains in q2 the transaction volume of eth dapp is still leading far ahead maintaining a 10 billion scale nearly 10 times the sum of eos and trons which is depressing because i invested in tron not doing so hot but that's just the way it is so this is actually the q2 dap report uh 2020 i'm not going to go over to this in detail i'm going to put this in the description because it's very long very uh granular detail so i commend the people that put out this uh report uh, but I'm just going to do the highlight. So the transaction volume of ETH has reached $5 billion in June, which, which counted 97.5% of the whole DAP volume of the Ethereum network, which is DeFi. After the, after the distribution of Comp, Compound's volume has increased from, this is crazy, $131 million in the first half of the month to $3.3 billion in the second half of the month. That is a 24X increase. That is amazing. So uh, if you invested into Compound, if you're one of the early investors, uh, congratulations, but just kind of came out and uh, I think the big winners there would probably be Coinbase. All right, and then a uh, nice little summary here. And I think what was interesting was I took a look at the total dApps uh, from you know Ethereum, EOS, Tron, Neo, Steam, uh, Tomo chain. I thought it was, I almost thought it was tomato chain. I was like, wow, that really is that really does exist. Tomato coin, Chili's uh, Hive, and all that stuff. And Ethereum across the board leads pretty much everything. So as far as DApps, totally unique users. You got 4.5 million. Tron's coming in uh, pretty close. Uh, 1.4. You know, I take that back. There's one called uh, Clayton. K L A Y T N has looks like seven and a half million. So a lot of users. Active DApps, uh, Clayton 47, 575, 57. So pretty close. New DApps, um, again, Ethereum leads everything, active users, transactions. But here's the big thing um, transactions, I don't really give that too much credence because we've seen how. You know, you can have whitewashing, you have just uh, different random transactions that are put by bots. So I don't really care about transactions. What I care about is volume. And volume looks to be, like I said, 10 billion for Ethereum, EOS, almost 2 billion, and Tron at 260 million. And I don't think there's really much going on. Yeah, Clayton 6,000. Oh, all right, 149 and 12. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, I still, if I had to put my money anywhere, and I really think about something that's going to be strong. I think it's going to be Ethereum. A lot of things are being built on Ethereum. It's got a lot of developers, a lot of things that are happening. And uh, it's a it's been a battle-tested project. It's been around for quite some time. And uh, I think it's going to do extremely well. How well? Again, I can tell you, I've always believed it's a $10,000 coin or more. And that's it. All right, let's move on to our next and last story, which we're going to give you some actually good news about taxes. So taxes, everybody hates them. And this was a great article by Sheehan Chandra, Chandrasekhar. And I've actually covered him before. And we got to know, well, who's writing? Who's putting pen to paper? Who is this guy? So this guy, Sheehan, is the head of tax strategy at Cointracker. He is a handful of CPAs who is recognized as a real-world operator and a conceptual subject matter. So as far as is this person legitimate, I will have to give a pass to Sheehan Looks like he knows what he's talking about. I am not a CPA. Sheehan is, so I will trust his opinions. Anyhow, moving into this, and he pretty much just sums up 2020 in a nutshell. He says, look, there were some noteworthy events that occurred in this quarter alone in the cryptocurrency tax space. Here's number one. I had no idea this was even a thing. The Virtual Currency Fairness Act was introduced to the House on January 6, 2020. This bill includes a de minimis exemption of up to $200 of capital gains for personal cryptocurrency transactions. Essentially, 
This allows cryptocurrency users to buy the proverbial cup of coffee without having to calculate their taxes on the transaction. This makes small personal crypto transactions non-taxable, and it's a great initiative to promote crypto as a medium of exchange for everyday use as opposed to a speculative asset. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even realize that was a thing. So if it's $200 or less, you don't really have to you know, clarify this as a uh, you know, capital gain. So if you bought Chainlink on January 1st, at you know you bought a couple of those and then it went up you know dramatically from a dollar eighty four. You know what? Let me take a look. What? Where did it go from? Let's see. Chain link. Chain link. Chain. V chain. Man, I missed this one. V chain uh, up nine percent, sixty five percent for the week. Everybody's in V chain. Congratulations. You're doing a great job. Just hold on to that. Uh, chain link here. It's five sixty six now. Looking good. Um, what has it been? Look at the one year. Looking for January first. Where am I? December, January 1st, $1.80. Look at that. What is sweet. Uh, I've I've been uh, dollar cost averaging Chainlink since 2019. And uh, I remember those times. $1.80, I was like, oh, not too bad. God, I could have sworn it was under a dollar at some point. Anyhow, so you're, you're from here and you go all the way up to here. That's a pretty good year. Not too shabby. So, you know, for this uh, article itself, if you bought a couple of Chainlink and then it went up, you know, 200%, 220%, uh, you don't have to came, uh, claim capital gains if it's under $200. That's a big thing. You can just use cryptocurrency for, you know, maybe what it was atten intentionally used for, peer-to-peer -peer transactions and uh, using it as an actual currency. So, hey, great. Next part, staking income. Uh, I had no idea about this. This is interesting. In the absence of any tax guidance, uh, it could be argued that staking rewards are taxed similar to rental income at the time of the receipt. Meanwhile, some experts argue that staking rewards should not be taxed at the time of receipt whether they should be taxed only when they are disposed of. So basically it goes like this. So when you actually have any kind of gains, one set of tax professionals will say, yes, you need to you know, do it right then and there. And the other one's like, no, you haven't uh, changed out, you haven't moved or you haven't uh, sold this cryptocurrency, so you should not uh, do it. So again, this really comes down to your CPA or tax professional. And there is one thing I'd like to make mention real quick, and that is that... Um, uh, when we talk about taxes, a lot of people think, oh, this is only for the U.S. You know, I don't really care about this. But you have to understand that uh, this is actually takes effect for a lot of different areas. So I did see this. I thought it was interesting. 350,000 uh, Australian crypto users are receiving tax warning letters. So this is if you've seen this, uh, comment uh, below because it says, hey, uh, disposing of your cryptocurrency can result in capital gains tax obligations. This is from the Australian government. Uh, Australian Taxation Office. Our records indicate you have previously disposed of crypto, meaning you sold it. Exchanging cryptocurrency for goods, cash, or other crypto is normally considered a disposable for capital gains tax. Make sure to include your results because we know. And if you're in America, and now I guess if you're in Australia, and uh, probably Canada, I would guess, uh, probably parts of Europe, I'm not a CPA, but I would say that if you use an exchange that uh, reports the government, uh, chances are they know exactly what you got. And uh, for me, uh, they know exactly how much I have because I uh, was using Coinbase for the longest time. Don't so much anymore. Or I have the issue where uh, I was generated 1099 and every different trade and transaction uh, the US government knows. So why would I not check off that, yes, I have virtual currency, which is this little thing right here from the 1040 uh, SR. And anytime during 2019, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency? I know it's not something that's very sexy, but I got to tell you right now, um, what is not sexy is going through an audit like I did years ago. So I'm just trying to tell you, a lot of people in the comments section are like, hey, I'm not checking that. I Yeah, I do have cryptocurrency. I'm not checking that. Okay. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> talk to your CPA. That's all I'm going to say. Moving down, moving down. Gaming tokens controversy. And I include this this section because I want you to realize just how far behind the IRS actually is and what they're actually doing as far as digital assets and cryptocurrency. They're just about as lost as everybody else. And this is going to highlight how bad it is. So until early February, until early February, not too long ago, gaming tokens such as Robux and V-Bucks were also considered to be virtual currency for the IRS website. The IRS added and suddenly deleted this guidance from their website, raising many eyebrows in the tax base. If it had stood, meaning they actually didn't take that back, this guidance would have subjected millions of parents 
to calculate taxes on their kids' online video gaming habits because it was such a broad swath or a broad interpretation of virtual currency. So the IRS is just kind of getting their feet wet with this. And they're kind of like, well, we don't really know this part. And there's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some bruises. But uh, I think they're just trying to do the best job that they can. Not that everybody, you know, is really rooting for the... No one roots for the IRS. Let's just be honest. So, um, you know, hopefully they can kind of figure it out and kind of make it manageable for everybody before it gets out of control. Because it's a good thing they actually went against this. Because if they didn't, oof, that'd have been awful for all the different parents out there. Next up, it says, for the first time ever, millions of U.S. taxpayers had to start answering the crypto question, which we just talked about. And then there was an IRS virtual currency tax summit. It was interesting to read about the next part of this. But on March 3rd, the IRS held an invite-only virtual currency summit at the IRS headquarters in Washington. This event included stakeholders in the crypto community, such as exchanges, crypto tax software companies, practitioners, and crypto advocacy groups. And when I took a look at the actual article, one thing caught my eye, and this was directly from the IRS, and it said, hey, Bitcoin's not anonymous, and we're paying attention. And it's a common misconception that Bitcoin is anonymous. It's not. I mean, there is different ways you can get around it. Uh, but for the for the layman that's just got it, and especially if you have it on like Coinbase, Gemini, any kind of Kraken, they're going to report all that stuff to the government. So just be ready. Actually, Bitcoin's quite traceable. In fact, the event opened up with the IRS commissioner, Chuck Reddick, highlighting a new indictment against two individuals who laundered $100 million of stolen crypto. So if you don't think they know, they know, and that's a bummer. But I'm going to show you a way to make things super simple for you in just a second. Just stick with me. And then lastly, it talks about uh, extending deadlines. So just so you know, the U.S. Department of Treasury and the IRS extended both the tax filing and payment deadlines to July 15th. So it is uh, July 7th. You got another week to go, which is pretty cool because, I mean, every, every day counts. And what I use, and I'm just going to tell you to make it very simple, is CryptoTrader.tax. This is exactly what I use. It took me 30 minutes to go through three years because I had to look back at all the different transactions and I'm gonna show you exactly how it is. So I'm gonna sign in to my account. Let me back up, select exchanges. So once you get here, you just select all your changes. So I use Binance, Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, and Huobi, <laughs> Huobi. So I click next and that's gonna just have you fill this out. If you don't see your exchange on the last screen, you click on manual exchange, just upload your CSV file that you get from the actual exchange, super simple. Then you're gonna click next. This one, you're just gonna leave it just, just to default because it's just easier. And look at all these trades, and there's a boatload of them all the way from 2017 moving forward. So there is 579 items. Jeez, that's a lot. And uh, I am not, in the mood to look through all spreadsheets and everything else and get it going and uh, calculate all these things. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not. I don't have time. But this is pretty great. And out of all these 579 items, here's some warnings. Missing data has been detected. Out of all that, there's four. There's four. And the reason why there's four is because Huobi sucks and they won't give me my information. And that's a problem, but whatever. So I just, I've already... Uh, I clicked on this button here where it says invite your tax professional and you just give the email to your to my to your CPA or whoever it is and they can look at it and they can just you know tell you what to do which uh, is great so I don't have to deal with that and then you just create report and then bam you're done 2017 18 19 all done and um, that's the best thing and the easiest way I can do it also if you look in the description of every one of my videos there's going to be a link to cryptotrader.tax which looks like this and you can get 20 percent off just for signing up now look you don't have to use it you can do it by hand but if you want to have fun and that's the big thing I will just say this two things as far as taxable events just so you know uh, buying and holding your Bitcoin or crypto is not taxable um, you only have uh, capital gains or losses when you dispose of it, meaning when you sell it or get rid of it. So here are the taxable events. Trading the Bitcoin for money, trading Bitcoin for another crypto. So going from Bitcoin to Ethereum, that's a taxable event. Spending Bitcoin on good or service, that makes sense. And earning Bitcoin as income or crypto as income, mining, staking, etc. So those are the taxable events. If you have done any of those, it's a pretty good chance the government knows what's going on. And that's it. Lastly, uh, this is one of the things I just learned about like a couple weeks ago, and I always like to make mention of it, is that uh, tax loss harvesting, which what CryptoTrader actually allows you to do. I'm going to sum this paragraph pretty quickly. It says, 
Wash sale rules are not applicable to cryptocurrencies under current guidance. And some crypto tax software helps you harvest tax losses. So what does that mean? What that means is if you bought Bitcoin at 10,000 and it drops to 7,000, you can sell your Bitcoin at $7,000 and just lock that loss in right there. But here's the great thing. You can immediately buy it back at $7,000 for you know one Bitcoin. And you can have $3,000 losses for your taxes that just is for your taxes, which is great, right? You have your losses, but you still have your Bitcoin. So, I mean, you may have to pay a transaction fee for the exchange that you're using, but you just have $3,000 in losses that you just created essentially from what is really wash sale. And since it's an unregulated area, wash sale rules do not apply to cryptocurrencies. I will link this Forbes column. This is actually also from Sheehan. Uh, he's a CPA and he has verified this and you can talk to this with your CPA. Um, and that's one of the big things that I actually used to save a lot of money on my taxes. All right. So that's it for today's video. I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I also want to say thanks to all the supporters. Really appreciate it. Level ones. Thank you so much. Level twos. All right. Soft. Win mullet. Myself. Who else? Dave Plummer. Grant Sharman. Bruce Wood. Baking Benjamins. Noel. Flipping Vegas. Martin Lewin. Michael, Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Canuck, Tessie Ryosaki Positive, Truck, LLC, JC Durex, Matt Slack, John Miller, The Office, L. Murray, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prospery, XRP Carolina, whatever, AE, and Hero Soap Company. And also, just watch out for this scam. Uh, my email is dandageless at news at gmail with an S. It's not dandageless at new. Somebody is impersonating me for some reason and they want you to do a trading challenge or something stupid so just uh delete that and that's it also uh just so you know uh for level twos this is going to be deprecated uh, i'm going to just do random shout outs uh by the end of july so we're going to actually get rid of the level twos never going to be level one and that's it so just so you know that's what's going to happen and uh that's all so thanks for sticking with me appreciate it see you on the next one